U.S. crop insurance premiums have increased significantly in recent years, and 2022 was no exception. Here to discuss a new report on the segment is Connor Brock, Senior Financial Analyst at AM Best. And Connor, 2022 crop insurers saw record premiums, but insurers still reported re- weaker results. What gives? Thanks, John. It's a great question. So as you know, crop insurance premiums have reached record levels and have nearly doubled for the multi peril crop insurance segment from about $10 billion in 2018 to roughly $20 billion in 2022. And private crop premiums have also increased significantly uh, from about a billion dollars to uh, 1.5 billion in 2022. And that's a function of higher agricultural commodity prices, with the prices of corn, soybeans, wheat, and cotton all having increased significantly in recent years. And so the weaker results reflect challenging growing conditions in many parts of the country, with widespread droughts and excessive heat conditions uh, impacting many states, um, but particularly the western half of the U.S. And so results in Texas, which is the largest market for multi peril crop insurance products with over $2 billion of premium in 2022 were particularly disappointing with a loss ratio in excess of 200%. And that's mainly because cotton and other crops were severely impacted by the heat and the droughts. And so droughts have been the leading individual cause of multi peril crop losses in the two most recent years. And in 2022, there are more than 39,000 claims attributable to droughts. And that drove uh, over $7.6 billion of indemnity payments to producers. And total indemnities for the program rose to more, north of $19 billion in 2022, which is the highest on record. Now, the report notes that there's been a lot of consolidation among crop insurance providers. What is that doing to the segment? Yeah, it's another great question. So consolidation has really been an ongoing theme in the crop insurance segment, and it's being driven by the need to develop economies of scale and geographic diversification that are required in order to maintain a profitable book of crop insurance business. So the result is that for crop year 2023, there were only 14 approved insurance providers. And looking forward, um, that's going to shrink even further to just 13 for crop year 2024, with American Financial Group's acquisition of crop risk services uh, from AIG that was recently announced this year. And so it's gotten to the point where the majority of approved insurance providers are large global commercial uh, and reinsurance organizations. And the market has essentially become highly concentrated with the top five uh, insurers controlling nearly three quarters of total premiums and the top 10 controlling about 95% of total premiums. So what can we expect for 2023, and is there anything crop insurers can do to mitigate further losses? John, it's still early, but AMBES is taking a cautiously optimistic view that underwriting results will show improvement in 2023. And the basis for that stems from our discussions with rated crop insurers and also a recent report uh, from risk modeling firm Fair Risk um, called uh, called the Crop Alert uh, from July. And that noted uh, parts of the Corn Belt received much needed rainfall in late July, and that alleviated drought conditions that were uh, persisting through the end of June. And overall, the improving conditions in the Corn Belt are likely to be offset by uh, continued challenges in Texas, which has experienced nearly absent rainfall and above normal temperatures, uh, leading to persistent and excessively dry conditions. Now, crop insurers can mitigate losses through adopting a more conservative approach to their fund designation strategies and also potentially implementing quota share or stop loss reinsurance arrangements. Thanks, Connor. Thanks, John. That was senior financial analyst Connor Brock. You can find the full report online at ambest.com. For AMBest TV, I'm John Weber.